Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's a gorgeous night for baseball, and that's what we've got. The first of this three-game series between the Alabama Crimson Tide and the LSU Tigers on the SEC ESPN Network. Come on inside Alex Box Stadium, Skip Burtman Field. With two-time College World Series champion pitcher Ronnie Rance, I'm Lynn Rollins. LSU has won five of its last six games, including a 16-8 decision over 14th-ranked Louisiana Tech back on Tuesday. And the reigning SEC Freshman of the Week, Trey Morgan, continues to be sensational offensively for LSU. Now, right now, the baseball looks like a beach ball to Trey Morgan. That average is 591 over the last five games. He's been the SEC Freshman of the Week a couple of times already this season. And the pride of Brother Martin High School down in New Orleans is having maybe one of the best freshman years in history. For the Alabama Crimson Tide, sophomore third baseman Zane Denton is one to watch tonight. He leads the club in batting average. Well, he's hopefully going to lead Alabama to a bounce back weekend. They were shut down a little bit last week against that hot Vandy pitching, but Zane Denton's been fantastic all year. 331, eight homers, which is a high number. Let's look at the starting pitching matchup. A pair of junior right-handers, Tyler Ross for Alabama and Landon Marceau for LSU. You see Ross has the six wins, but Marceau has the low ERA, 2.33, and fantastic control, 15 walks to go along with 91 strikeouts. Well, Ronnie, let's look a little closer at Landon Marceau. Out of all of his outstanding statistics this year, to me, the thing that really jumps out a little more than anything else is that 204 against batting average. Well, you know, the I would say also the strikeouts per innings pitched combined with the walks. I mean, you know, to, in order to have a, a six to one strikeout to walk ratio, that is, in, is in, insane, especially in this league, in the SEC. In the velocity, 90 93, it's been consistent. You know, his first couple years was a little down in the 80s, but he's been 92 93 the entire game a lot of times. Let's take a look at the Alabama. Crimson Tide batting order. There are two 300 hitters in this lineup. Peyton Wilson at the top is batting 313, and Zane Denton at 331 leads the team. This is a batting average of 276 overall for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Now Brad Bohannon, you see him down there as the head coach. He's in his fourth season. Alabama 11 and 12. They did uh, have one game rained down, and that was in last Sunday, the third game of the series against Vanderbilt, Alabama dropped the first two. The Sunday game got rained out, and so they'll, they will finish the season probably with 29 games played in conference where most other teams will play 30. Marceau has had a dozen starts. Everything he's thrown this year has been as a starter. And this is start number 13 of Baker's Dozen. LSU has been playing better baseball the last couple of weeks, but still has some work to do with two SEC series remaining. So Marceau to Peyton Wilson. Wilson has nine homers at the top of the order, and he's driven in 29. Marceau misses with the first pitch. Brandon Cooper is calling balls and strikes. Barry Chambers at first base. Stephen Hagen at second base, and Jason Johnson is the third base umpire. A chop to the right side. Drew Bianco is there for the easy out. So Wilson rolls to the second baseman, Bianco. Now, Bianco, quite a story here, Len. You know, it's a guy who uh, in a, a month ago you wouldn't have ever thought he would be the kind of everyday second baseman for LSU, but he's taken that opportunity, kind of seems to get one hit per game. He's been very consistent. His average has improved over 50 points in the last uh, three weeks, and so Palmineri says he's earned the spot to start this weekend. William Hammeter at the plate, hitting just under 300 at 299. He's driven in 30. That's good production early in the order. He's a hometown guy out of Tuscaloosa, which is where the SEC softball tournament is being played. The 0-1 pitch, a changeup, and Hammeter was way out in front. We've got a wind blowing lazily out toward left field tonight. Amateur fouls one the other way. This is one of the nicer crowds this year. 
Great baseball weather coming up this weekend. Well, it is one of the larger crowds, you know, uh, 100% capacity here, no mass requirements, and, and tailgating allowed. When I drove drove up an hour or so before game time, you saw people tailgating, and it, it looked pretty normal, Lynn. I mean, you saw people walk tailgating across the street, across the train tracks, in the parking lot here, and I think folks are excited for great weather and a giant series that's meaningful. This is the last regular season SEC weekend for LSU, and this is a super meaningful one. Let's take a look at the LSU defense. Gavin Dugas, Dylan Cruz is the center fielder, and Mitchell Sanford is the right fielder tonight. Kate Doty, Jordan Thompson, Drew Bianco, and Trey Morgan on the infield. Alex Malazzo is behind the plate. One out, one on, as Hammeter was hit by a pitch. That's only the second batter that Marceau has hit this year. And he was ahead in the count 0 2, so that was pretty strange. You don't want to face this guy with runners on base, Zane Denton. He's on a three game hitting streak and he's batting a team leading 331. Eight homers, 34 driven in. That latter number is second on the club in RBI, behind only Sam Prater, who's on deck. He's got 41. The outfield backs up a couple of steps and pretty much straight away. The 1-1 pitch, Marceau delivers, chop to the right side again. There's only one play, it's the first base. And Bianco has a couple of assists here in the first. Yeah, the changeup is working early on for Landon Marceau, and that's a good sign because when he's right, that is uh, you know, his clearly his second best pitch. And he's been 83 with that changeup way on the outside portion to complement that 93 mile an hour heater. Sam Prater is batting a solid 280, 41 driven in, and a team leading 12 homers. First base is open, so we'll see how LSU pitches Prater. Diodotti is on deck. The infield has shifted a bit, pulling Prater. Bianco is almost behind the bag at second. Marceau misses upstairs with a fastball. Definitely playing Prater to pull a little bit here as Bianco is in the outfield grass, almost directly behind second base. Prater is a junior. Two balls, no strikes, two outs, a runner in scoring position for the Crimson Tide in the first. Marceau throws a strike low in the zone. Landed Marceau out of Destrehan High School just outside of the city of New Orleans, about 10 minutes or so from the New Orleans airport. Actually considered skipping his senior year in high school and enrolling in LSU early. That was something that was bandied about, which LSU's had a couple of guys do that. Uh, remember Parrish, the catcher from a few years ago from Florida. He skipped his senior year, and, but Marceau decided against it. That was probably a wise choice. Two veterans battling here, Marceau and Prater. The 2-2 two -two pitch misses low and away. Marceau is one of the most composed competitors at the pitching position. It does not show a lot of expression one way or the other. Even if he gets a strikeout, you're lucky if you get a little fist pump. The 3-2 pitch. Downstairs, Marceau working very craftily to Sam Prater, but he loses him on the 3-2 ball. Boy, they showed a lot of respect for Prater that at bat. 2-2, curveball, 3-2 changeup. 
Because they knew they had the base open, and they uh, they didn't want to take any chances. Here's the designated hitter, Owen Diodotti. D-I-D-A. D-I-O-D-A-T-I. He's on a three-game hitting streak. Marceau looking to get back to the dugout with no damage done. Swing and a miss. That looked like an off-speed pitch. Diodotti, the Canadian from Ontario, just across the border of New York and Niagara Falls, Ontario. Sophomore, 6'1", 180-pounder. He stands as deep in the batter's box as possible. Marceau delivers the 0-1 pitch. It's grounded foul. The Alex Box Stadium crowd starts to encourage Marceau. The 0-2 pitch, two outs, two on. Top of the first. Way high. Malazzo had to leap out of his crouch to save it. Marceau working from the extreme edge of the pitcher's plate on the first base side. Slowly to the belt and now to the plate. That is foul just past first. We are delighted to be coming your way. Alabama, LSU, first game of this series here in Baton Rouge. Alabama next week will close out it's season with three games against Mississippi State on the 20th, the 21st, and 22nd of May. The SEC tournament starts May 25th. Swing and a miss on a pitch that was out of the strike zone. Diodati could not lay off that high bid by Marceau. So he gets a clutch strikeout. Two Crimson Tide players are left on base. We go to the bottom of the first inning. No score. Alabama, LSU. Why'd they put you in a fire tower? Well, I'm just lucky, I guess. Maybe a summer in a fire tower do you some good. You in trouble? You missed the boy. I'm worried about what he might know. Are you someone I can trust? You can't risk your life for everybody. That's our job. <laughs> Those who wish me dead. Rated R. Now playing in theaters and on HBO Max. Salmon wild caught. She only eats wild caught. Uh, I need a price check on honey. <sighs> Don't get mad. Get E Trade and get more than just trading. Investing, banking, guidance. If you want to go from I don't got it to I got this, well, then get this. A deliciously bold, smooth espresso drink from Dunkin'. Like a caramel macchiato, mocha, or oat milk latte. Take a sip of You Got This with Dunkin' Espresso Drinks. Order ahead plus earn rewards. America runs on Dunkin'. No score. Alabama left a couple of base runners. On a hit batter and a walk in the first. LSU comes to the plate against Tyler Ross. Tyler Ross has six wins. Only two losses. An ERA of above five and a half, 63 and a third innings. He has struck out 42. He's walked only 16 out of Middletown, New Jersey. A big junior right-hander. 6'4", 205. You see the, six, the uh, strikeouts are not overly high. Opponents are batting 276 against Ross. He's got a nice 6-2 and two record. That's worked out. But in 63 and a third innings, innings pitched this year, has only punched out 42, but has walked 16. 
Let's look at LSU's starting lineup. There are three 300 hitters in this nine. Trey Morgan at 375. Dylan Cruz at 350. The other 300 hitter is Kate Doty at 301. Trey Morgan brings his seven game hitting streak to the plate. Morgan is first pitch swinging and flicks it foul. So an interesting change uh, by LSU, right, in their lineup tonight. No, uh, no Giovanni DiGiacomo, who's they not not playing tonight. And Morgan slices one the other way, and he'll run a <laughs> while. Nobody in the SEC has been swinging a better bat than the freshman first baseman Trey Morgan. I keep I keep waiting for you to say it. You haven't given it to me yet. I can't describe it. He's swinging Excalibur. He is swinging Excalibur. <laughs> like, yeah, that's your go-to line for a guy that's on fire as much as Trey Morgan is. I mean, it's really amazing what he's doing. He can do that, hit it the other way with authority. He can pull it like he did at Auburn and hit a 94-mile-an-hour fastball out to right field. I mean, there is nothing that young man can't do. That's his 14th double of the season. And a quick strike to Dylan Cruz. Came in hitting 394 in SEC play. That average probably up to 400 now. He leads the team with those 14 doubles. He also leads the team by a large margin with four triples. And Trey Morgan quickly moves his hitting streak to eight games. He had an 11 game hitting streak earlier this year. That's been his longest. Dylan Cruz at the plate playing center field tonight. Hasn't done that uh, maybe once this year. I, I think he, he mostly right field getting the opportunity to play center. He Sam. played some center field in high school. Mm -hmm. He chops this one up the middle. Morgan will make third easily. And there is no throw from Peyton Wilson, who had to back up and actually caught that second or third bounce on the outfield grass. Batman and Robin. I mean, you know, they just they're the super duo of the freshmen. And, and, you know, I really believe that the success of the one spurs the other. I mean, I think there's a friendly rivalry competition. There has to be. They've been hitting next to each other all year. They're both the freshmen. And neither one gets wants to get outshined by the other. I mean, Dylan Cruz is the guy that came in with all the accolades that everybody was talking about. Yeah, Trey Morgan was good, too. But, but Dylan Cruz was supposed to be the alpha male in the freshman room. And all of a sudden, Trey Morgan's saying, hey, I'm a, I got a little something to say about that. Gavin Dugas at the plate, hitting 297, a team leading 12 homers, a team leading 52 driven in. An RBI opportunity here that LSU cannot squander. There will be no play on this foul ball. If it wasn't for the eye-popping numbers of Cruz and Morgan, we'd probably be talking more about Gavin Dugas because he's had a, a sensational year. Average right around 300, double-digit homers for the first time in his career. Leads the team in that category with 12. Also has the 11 doubles. I mean, he's been a 581 per, a slugging percentage, second best on the team. Ross just misses away. One of the numbers that's noteworthy on Ross, he's given up 14 home runs. And that's a pretty high number in 63 innings. It's a big time high number. The 2 1. Smashed into left on a line, caught by the left fielder. <laughs> Man. And Morgan tags and scores easily. That'll be a sacrifice fly, but I mean, that ball was absolutely stunned. Stung. Let's see if we can't get an exit velocity off that one. I mean, I. Got to be about a buck ten, huh? Something like that. I mean, it was just crushed. Morgan did not make the mistake of leaving 
third base. That was 108.7. You're very close, Mr. Rance. That time my eyes did me right. I have a little trouble judging distances. I'm a little better at the exit velocity thing. Here's Kate Doty. He's having a nice year. Cruz draws a throw at first. One nothing LSU and a double by Morgan, a single by Cruz, and a sacrifice line drive to left field by Dugas. Tell you what, the first four hitters in this LSU lineup is really shaping up nicely. I mean, it is pretty dangerous lineup compared to everybody else in the country. And here's another guy, very similar numbers to what Dugas is doing. Doty right out just a tick over 300, but he's got the double digit homers and seven doubles. And he's played a few less games than those other guys. And 45 driven in, which is second on the team. He's played five less games than Morgan and Cruz and four less games than Dugas. He was hurt, remember, early in the season and missed five games. Remember how he got hurt? That was a celebration, wasn't it? <laughs> he, he literally was in the dugout. A friend, guy hits a homer. He just throws his arms in the air and ow. He, he, uh, he had trouble with his right shoulder. He had no trouble with that pitch. A liner into left center field. Cruz is on his way to third, and he makes it. LSU banging the ball here in the bottom of the first. First four hitters in this lineup, every single one of them have hit the ball hard, and some harder than others. And this one's a little bit off the end of the bat, but Doty keeping the chain going. Runners on the corners for Jordan Thompson, the LSU shortstop. Thompson hitting 271 in his freshman season. He's tagged eight homers, 24 driven in. Ball one. Three base hits and a sacrifice line drive have been evident in this inning. Thompson, the number five hitter. Ross delivers. There goes the runner from first. Out at first base. That throw by Prater actually skipped into the glove of the second baseman. And Doty was called out, but we are going to have a conference and perhaps a replay of this I wonder what by they're review. Discussing. Okay, right here, nothing with Thompson. There's no interference. And the umpire at second. Called him out. Now he's safe, I think, I think right he is there. Safe. When you look right there, he's safe and he, he signals immediately to the dugout and says, challenge. You know, when he puts his hands up to his ears, he's telling Palmineri, you might want to check that. So, based on the early replay we saw, it looked like he did get to the bag before the tag. Place your diet drink bets at home. Well, that was a nifty slide. I don't know if we'll get a chance to see it here in a minute, but that was an act, a very nifty slide by Kate Doty right here. He kind of throws on the brakes and then gives the old, ooh. Okay, let's see. Okay, the, the, the glove's touching him right there on the I, thigh. I don't think it is touching him yet. Right there. That ball, that's touching him. And his foot is maybe, I don't know if there's enough there to overturn it. I think if he had called them safe, he'd this stay safe. This might be a better angle. Can't really tell. I, I think it's so bang bang. It may even be a tie, that whichever you called it on the field, I think is going to stay. If you'd have said safe, it'd have been safe. Out, out. There's not enough there by the naked eye to overturn. The it. first replay I saw led me to believe that he was safe, but the latter two, right. I, I think I'm going to have to reverse my original rendering. Doty hasn't run much this year. He's only one for two in stolen bases. Can we just slide head first? I mean, I just, I want to have that. I wish Boots Garland was with us. Boots was the speed coach in the 80s and 90s at LSU. And he, uh, he, he what do you know about a speed coach? Well, I watched a lot of speed coaches. I didn't say that I was, you know, the guy. Although, 
Don't let the size fool you, Lynn. I could pick them up and put them down pretty decent back in the day. But that said, we used to. it's all about sliding head first. If you're a true base stealer and you're going to second base, you've got to slide head first. You get there quicker. And you potentially can maneuver away from the tag. There's a lot of things you can do. I mean, you can slide outside. You can show the hand. You know, with the you can slide with the left, take it away, reach in with the right. All right, here we go. The call is upheld. Yep, on the mound. On the mound. There just was not enough there to overturn it, Lynn. I think again, whatever you would have called on the field, safer out, it was going to stay that way based on the re the review. It was so close. Jordan Thompson waits with a count of one ball and one strike. LSU has scored on a sacrifice fly by Dugas after the double by Morgan and single by Cruz. A runner at third with two outs now. Ball upstairs. Thompson has been supported with a lot of runs this year because he's got a high ERA. 5.77, but a 6-2 and two record. Mitchell Sanford is on deck. Thompson will have to keep the inning alive to get Sanford to the plate. The right fielder is calling for this one. And he snares it for the out. Hammeter catches the very high fly ball to right field. But LSU gets in front on a double by Morgan, a single by Cruz, and a sacrifice fly by Dugas. one nothing Tigers. This is a Tempur-Pedic mattress. And its mission is to give you truly transformative sleep. So no more tossing and turning or trouble falling asleep. Because only Tempur-Pedic uses proprietary temper material that continuously adapts and responds to your body to relieve pressure. So you get deep, uninterrupted sleep all night, every night. The Tempur-Pedic Summer of Sleep starts now with all Tempur-Pedic mattresses on sale and savings up to $500 on adjustable sets. Those who wish me dead. How are you out of this? Don't miss the must-see thriller in theaters and on HBO Max. I have a pretty sharp axe. Those who wish me dead. Rated R. Now playing in theaters and on HBO Max. If you want to go from I don't got it to I got this, well, then get this. A deliciously bold, smooth espresso drink from Dunkin'. Like a caramel macchiato, mocha, or oat milk latte. Take a sip of you got this with Dunkin' espresso drinks. Order ahead plus earn rewards. America runs on Dunkin'. Salmon wild caught? She only eats wild caught. Uh, I need a price check on honey. <sighs> Don't get mad, get E-Trade and get more than just trading. Investing, banking, guidance. LSU cranked three hits in the first inning and leads 1-0 over Alabama. Postseason discussions, of course, are starting to come to full flame. And here is the D1Baseball.com postseason projection list. The last five in, Georgia, Kentucky, two lanes. And we'll get back to that in just a moment. There's a one-hopper right back to Marceau. He's got it in a self-defense play and gets, gets the uh, batter, T.J. Reeves. Well, Ronnie, let's look at this. The first five out, Alabama, LSU. Included in that group, that makes this series extremely meaningful. Oh, I mean, you talk about it, you look right there. I mean, you, you almost feel like whoever wins this series might be in and the other might be out. How about Tulane? Uh, they've got them listed uh, as one of the five in from the state of Louisiana. And LSU, that win against, um, uh, against Louisiana Tech on Tuesday, a ranked team in every poll, 
a top 25 team in, in RPI strength kind of I think has given gave LSU a little juice a little extra bump going into the weekend Davis Heller the first baseman swings through the second pitch and falls behind 0-2 how about uh, speaking of Louisiana Tech they were one of the 20 teams named today as a potential host site for an NSA regional they'll announce the 16 host sites down the road but right now there are 20 teams that are in that the consideration and they're one of them Morgan ran a long way to his right but couldn't quite make the stop I'm not sure he had a play at first base anyway Marceau would have been covering and that one just out of the reach of a sure pluck by Morgan he gets his glove on this but can't stop it yeah I think if he doesn't get a glove on it, it's gonna get by him and get that outfield anyway so it wasn't like he took it away from anyone he ranged way to his right here's Jim Jarvis he's hitting 257 but he's hit safely in six straight games Steve right Jarvis out of San Diego California 5 10 pounder He rams one into right field, a clean base hit. It's bobbled out there by Sanford. The throw to second bounces off the chest of Bianco, and everybody is safe. Now, this is a, an error and allows the trail runner to move up. It's a change up that uh, does a nice job staying back on it, hits it sharply to right field. Sanford. Just boots this ball, but he's got a he's got a hand cannon out there, and he just kind of rushes the throw. If he steps into it, he throws it in the air to Bianco. He's going to be dead to rights, but he rushed it. He panicked a little bit. Jarvis was able to move up to second. So a base hit and an error, and with one out, the Crimson Tide have runners at second and third. So Marceau LSU she will see the water start to bubble around him now. We're going to trade the out for a run here. Playing the infield back. Strike one. To Caden Rose the center fielder. You're Alabama you've got to get this run home. And if you're Marceau you are really looking to get a strikeout here. Rose has struck out 39 times this year and that's the second highest number for Alabama he strikes out almost 39 percent of the time I mean that's a super high number so Marceau I'm sure knows that and is going to go at him go at him hard here to try to get number 40 the 1-1 one, one pitch that's a lazy Half-hearted swing, a disturbed swing, as Rose never really did pick this pitch up. He was completely fooled. He, wow! Look at that, look at that ball, the tumble on it. Fantastic, hard over the top curveball by Marso. The one-two pitch. That's captured by Malazzo. Alabama got two base runners in the first. Alabama has two base runners in scoring position in the second. The 2 2 from Landon Marceau. He struck him out. Marceau absolutely needed a strikeout and he got it. Yeah, you know, obviously the book is the is the breaking ball as most freshmen struggle with that pitch and Marceau's a bad matchup if you struggle picking up a breaking ball because he's got one of the better ones in the SEC. That one was well outside of the strike zone, but Caden Rose went after it. So back to the top of the order for Peyton Wilson who bounced out to Bianco at second base last time. 
LSU's infield retreats to normal depth. First pitch, fastball, misses. That's a good guy to have right here for Alabama. Base hit will give the tie the lead. Peyton Wilson is the leading hitter on the team in SEC play. Comes into tonight hitting 350 on the year in SEC play. That's really good stuff. He's had 61 base hits in 45 games, and that's the most among the Crimson Tide players. Marceau trying to walk across the hot coals here without being damaged. Ground ball, shortstop side, throw to first in time. LSU with Landon Marceau bearing down. Prevents the Crimson Tide from scoring after they had runners at second and third with one out. So we go to the bottom of the second inning. LSU one, Alabama nothing. With a top rated app that lets you deposit checks and transfer money anytime, anywhere, banking with Capital One is like the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Kind of like I'll take Barkley. Yes, I still got it. I told you she'd pick me first. Yep, even easier than that. Plus, with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is it really even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Weight isn't the best measure of physical health because it can be made of all sorts of stuff. Introducing Amazon Halo. Halo uses your smartphone's camera to analyze body fat percentage a better indicator of health than weight or BMI alone. Then a personalized 3D model helps you track progress over time. Halo's nearly twice as accurate as leading at-home smart scales, so you can focus on your health, not just your weight. We knew we needed life insurance for our kids. For our mortgage. For our retirement. But we didn't want to deal with the long application process. The expensive premiums. The medical exams. That's why we got life insurance with Ethos Life. You can apply in minutes online at ethoslife.com for a policy that fits your budget and your needs. Ethos Life offers policies from top-rated life insurance carriers with no medical exams. So whoever you are, Ethos is life insurance made for you. Get a free life insurance quote today at ethoslife.com. These teams have played 375 games in their baseball histories. Alabama leads the series. 203 wins, 169 losses, and three ties. This series goes all the way back to 1906. LSU has had good success, though, winning 18 of the past 24. And it's been a while, five years, since Alabama has won a series in Baton Rouge. Right fielder Mitchell Sanford. Waves at the first pitch from Ross. Veloso and Bianco will follow. LSU hit the ball hard in the first inning. A ringing double into the right field corner, or excuse me, the left field corner by Morgan. Cruz followed with a base hit. Dugas had a sacrifice line drive out to left field. And then Doty followed with a hit. LSU was only able to get one out of it. But the Tigers have turned back two would-be rallies already by Alabama. Three balls and a strike. Mitchell Sanford was uh, sitting over there on the bench on Tuesday against Louisiana Tech, and all of a sudden he gets summoned into the game. The second inning and uh, ended up having a good game against Louisiana Tech. Picked up a hit in that game, hit in that uh, contest, and all of a sudden here he is starting tonight in right field against the Tide. He's called out looking. Must have been looking for something else because instead he got fastball 92 right down the middle at the knees. That is a fantastic pitch, and he was just frozen. So 
situation sometimes the hitter you're sitting on a breaking ball all of a sudden you get that fastball and you don't expect it you just can't pull the trigger. Beloso is first pitch swinging he drives it deep to the warning track and it's caught by the right fielder and Cade Beloso has had more than his share of those kind of outs this year. Once again he rams one on a line deep to right field it got to the dirt out there. But Hammeter was there for the catch. Two gone for Bianco. Ronnie very quietly Drew Bianco after a difficult start offensively has now been on base in 12 consecutive games. That hit, that's hit well. But it's going to carry out to the center fielder Rose. I mean the Tigers right now are just absolutely seeing Ross pretty well. They squared up a number of balls here in the first two innings. We go to the third. LSU leads it one nothing over the Alabama Crimson Tide on the SEC ESPN Network. Your summer starts here. Time to save on a new Toyota and get out and have some fun. Catch a great deal today. During the Summer Starts Here sales event, get $750 customer cash on a new 2021 RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. Did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and more? So what are you waiting for? World's strongest man, Martins Litsis, to help you break down boxes? What am I gonna do to you, box? Let me break it down for you. Oh, yeah. Geico, see all the ways you could save. Riding a bike should be a really fun experience. We make low maintenance bicycles for everyday riders. We were coming off a great year and when the pandemic hit. It just stopped. We really had to think creatively. Teams allowed us to do what we call virtual visits. Hey, is that TK? Hi, how are you? We're able to see two or threefold the amount of customers from all over the world. Without teams, there's no way this would have been possible. And I really think it's gonna set a standard for retail moving forward. When it's hot outside, your car is like a sauna. Steaming up lingering odors. Febreze Car Vent Clips stop hot car stench with up to 30 days of freshness. Get relief with Febreze. If you're tired and you know it, skip the gym. If you're anxious and you know it, take a break. If your heart rate variability is 50 and your body temperature is normal. If your breathing rate is optimal and you know it. Bring it on. Aura. Know why you feel how you feel. It's pretty much a maskless crowd tonight. And the attendance may be the best of the year. No runs, two hits for Alabama. One run, three hits for LSU. Both teams have had chances to get on the scoreboard. More than has been reached so far. LSU picking up a single marker in the first. With Ronnie Rance, I'm Lynn Rollins. And we are absolutely delighted to be coming your way in your living rooms, your sports bars, your airport waiting areas, on your tablets, your phones, your personal devices. However and wherever you may be enjoying SEC baseball tonight, welcome to the program. LSU's with three hits through the first two innings, Alabama with two. But I'll tell you, Lynn, LSU could easily have about another three. The way they have uh, barreled up baseballs and, and Eddie Smith their hitting coach I mean that's all you want you know just hit the ball hard and eventually they're going to fall I mean and uh, Tigers right now are locked in Eddie Smith's parents from the state of Washington are here that's right they rarely ever you know get down here they live so far away and they said they came uh, for a football game I think two years ago I think the, the Joe Burrow when they beat Auburn he was here for that one I had the pleasure of meeting his parents a few nights ago, and the first thing they said was, pucker up and kiss that baby goodbye. <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> they would having their son as the hitting coach. Of course. They've puckered a lot this year. Eighth in the country as far as puckering goes. Yeah, they get their five ninety nine a month worth uh, watching all the LSU games from Washington on ESPN Plus. They they uh, watch a lot of college baseball. Marceau records the strikeout. That's his third. He's got one in each inning. Boy, I mean this, the, the breaking ball is just on tonight. Thing that's impressive about that one again is that it's just straight down. I mean, it's not back foot curveball or breaking ball. It is just old-fashioned 12-6 tumbler. Here's Denton who bounced out to the right side last time, and it looks like Bianco will make another play. He does. That was an off-speed pitch to get things started, and Denton went for it. At this level, if you're able to throw three pitches for three different kinds of pitches for strikes down in the zone and have a good mix going, you're going to be ultra successful. And that's what Marceau has. He's had the changeup since the first pitch of the game. The fastball's been really good. The breaking ball's on point. He may have the best stuff of the whole year tonight. Prater walked last time. He's first pitch swinging. And that is over the head of Cruz. He picks it up against the wall in the deepest part of the ballpark, and Sam Prater stops at second base with a ringing double over the head of Dylan Cruz. That's his 10th two-bagger of the season. Well, this is a good idea, right? When you've got a pitcher that's locked in like Marceau, go first, go hunting a fastball. And he jumped on the first one he saw. First pitch swinging, got a 92-mile-an-hour heater that was a little bit up in the zone, and he... He made Marceau pay for it and drove it uh, about 390. I'm not sure Cruz could have made that catch, but he took a little bit of a circular route toward it. The first step or two were not in retreat mode. And of course, he's playing center field for the first time in a while tonight. Diodotti turns away, the pitch is inside. Two outs, Prater at second base, and Ronnie for the third straight inning. Alabama has a runner in scoring position. That was Prater's 11th extra base hit in SEC play this season after that, you know, after that double. And his average in SEC play is over 300. So they've got three guys in Prater, Drew Williamson, and Peyton Wilson all hitting better than 300 in SEC play. And Prater is hitting better against SEC pitching by about 25 points. The 1 1 to Diodotti. Very high. Marceau is number five in the Southeastern Conference with an ERA of 2.33. He's pitched the second most innings in the league. Number five in strikeouts. Number nine in opponents batting average against at only 204. Both teams have three hits. Marceau, the 2 1 pitch. Steve, right? Marceau can carve you with a lot of pitches and throw it over the plate in a lot of places. The make it happen pitch at 2-2, grounded foul. Marceau made the 2019 NCAA Regional All Tournament team. He was chosen in the Major League Baseball draft back in 2018 in the 37th round by the New York Yankees. The 2 2 pitch. Steer right. 
three called. Now that's, you know, Diodati in a bad spot right there, Lynn, when it's a two ball, two strike count, and Marceau's got all three pitches going. You just don't know what he's going to throw. Right there, he throws a great backdoor breaking ball, and Marceau is locked in tonight. Tigers lead it one to nothing, coming to bat right here on ESPN+. Plus. As soon as I walk in and saw the castle, you just get that feeling. Everyone is always reminding people to follow their social distancing rules. I am so thankful that Disney World is open. Still the same magic of Disney that I've always loved. Strip away what you don't want, like added sugars and preservatives. And what's left is the good stuff, the real fruit and vegetable juices of Naked. Strip down to Naked. Truthfully, it's frustrating to see how fast dust reappears. But dusting with a cloth is a pain. And dealing with a bulky vacuum is such a hassle. Ugh. Ugh. So now we use our Swiffer Sweeper. And dusters. The fluffy fibers, they pick up dust easily. Wrapping it in all those hard to reach places. Gotcha. And for our floors, Sweeper's textured cloths lock all kinds of dirt, dust, and pet hair. Unlike my vacuum, it sneaks under and around places. Look at that. Dust free and hassle free. Stop cleaning, start Swiffering. Both teams have three hits. LSU has the only run of the game. It will try to add some more to the Alex Fox Stadium Skip Bertman Field scoreboard here in the bottom of the third with Ronnie Rance, a two-time College World Series champion pitcher for the LSU Tigers. I'm Lynn Rollins. Tyler Ross, last name spelled R-A-S, but pronounced Ross, working for Alabama. Landon Marceau for LSU. Now this is the guy right here in Alex Malazzo, Lynn, who LSU would like to see him kind of get going a little bit offensively. They finally got Drew Bianco kind of going. He's been red hot and climbed his average up, like I said, nearly 100 points. Alex Malazzo still hitting only 167 after 32 starts this year. We know he's gonna be the guy the rest of the year behind the plate uh, due to the injuries, to injury and out for the year Travinsky. So he's gotta be the guy. He's doing a great job defensively. Can he get the average north of 200? I think it's possible. This is Malazzo's first at bat. The Tigers sent five to the plate in the first inning. They hit two balls very hard in the second, but they went down in order. Malazzo takes a strike and he's left at the plate. Yeah, that was a fantastic sequence by Ross. Got ahead 0-2, and then how about this? You know, a lot of times you see an 0-2 waste pitch. This time he just decides, you know what, I'm gonna go right out. I'm not gonna waste any pitches on the number nine hitter. Throws a really good curveball. That is strikeout number two for Ross. And here's a guy hotter than Salsa on sunburn, Trey Morgan. He doubled and scored in the first. He hit a stinger down the left field line to get things started for the Tigers. Morgan has hit safely now in eight straight games. Two balls, no strikes. On the freshman, first baseman, Trey Morgan. Gotta get a good hitter's count here, 2 0, then. Now it's 3 0. Yeah, with nobody on base, you know, they went at him with the fastball. And just Ross, after having great command to Malazzo, all of a sudden has kind of lost his feel right here to Morgan. As dangerous a hitter as Morgan is, if he gets on base, he's also more than capable of stealing second. Three balls and a strike on the freshman Phenom.
Cruz is on deck. Morgan slashes that one foul. Take a look at Morgan's uh, kicks right there, Lynn. Those shoes that he's wearing tonight. A little high top, throwback Nikes with the, with the gold accents. I mean, those are sharp. But you didn't have that back in the day at Bolton High in the early 60s, right? Oh, when no, you were no, no. Catching. We had the Chuck Taylors. Do you remember those? No, I remember the Chuck Taylors, yeah. Those are those are outstanding. Only you would be paying attention to Sartorial those are Air Splendor. Jordans. Those are the Air Jordan uh, Nikes. The three two pitch. Upstairs. Trey Morgan I've, is aboard again. When I played for uh, Coach Bartman, we got one pair of cleats a year. They were Converse, thanks to Jodine. And, you know, the only way you got a new pair was if your, your toe actually stuck out of the front of the shoe. You'd have to bring your pair to the coach to show him that, look, I need a new pair. Because other than that, you wouldn't get a, you wouldn't get one. The first place he sent you, though, was uh, to the shoe repair shop. <laughs> That's absolutely. Sew it up, and then <laughs> we'll worry about it next time. That's the first walk from Ross. Here's Cruz. He swings through the first pitch. Except for Todd Walker. He could get a new pair whenever he felt, felt like it. Well, he wore them out. He was on base so much. <laughs> That's right. Morgan shortens his lead just a little bit. And Cruz can't find it again. You can see how Ross that with that breaking ball is much harder on righties than he is on lefties that you know, when Malazzo is up at the plate now Cruz we've seen some of the better breaking pitches of the night. Cruz is number eight in the SEC in batting average. Number four in total bases number eight in hits. Number six in on base percentage number ten in stolen bases and number eight in walks. He's on the 45 man mid season watch list for the 2021 Golden Spikes Award. Here it comes at one ball two strikes. These teams will gather tomorrow at two o'clock two o'clock is the game time Sunday as well. Tomorrow's game is available on the SEC Network. We'll be right back with you on the SEC ESPN Network on Sunday. Morgan is on the move and the throw is a little bit high and on the inside. I think Morgan might have been called out had that ball been held, yeah, but he is awarded second base. Yeah, I agree. This is uh, didn't get a great jump and a fantastic throw. No throw got rid of it quickly. Morgan just didn't get down there. He kind of tried to go wide and he, it does. It tags him right on the back side. But as he's falling down right at the very end, the ball comes free. The ball's not in the glove. It's to the right of him. So Morgan will get credit for another stolen base, which for him is number 14 on the year in 18 attempts. Prater has thrown uh, has thrown out 10 of 40 runners this year. That's 25 percent. You'd like to be closer to 35 or 40. Gavin Dugas takes one outside. Morgan in scoring position for Dugas. He peppered a line drive to left field last time. It was caught, but it produced a run with Morgan scoring from third. He hits this one to the left side. The shortstop Jarvis makes the throw in a very long stretch by Heller at first base. So LSU leaves a runner at second, and we go to the fourth. Tigers won. Crimson Tide nothing.
Did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and more? So what are you waiting for? World's strongest man, Martins Litsis, to help you break down boxes? What am I gonna do to you, box? Let me break it down for you. Oh! Yeah! Geico, see all the ways you could save. Did you know the source of odor in your home could be all your soft surfaces? Odors get trapped in your home's fabrics and resurface over time. Febreze Fabric Refresher eliminates odors. Its water-based formula safely penetrates fabrics where odors hide. Spray it on your rugs, your curtains, your furniture, all over your home to make it part of your tidying up routine. Febreze Fabric Refresher, for an all-over freshness you'll love. The Harry's Razor is not the same. Because some of us are not the same. Our close shave comes from our five German-engineered blades, designed to start sharp and stay sharp. And we never upcharge you for high quality. So for those of us who don't want just the same, Harry's Razors are here. Harry's, not the same. Available in-store and at harrys.com. Look at the way, so you see there's a strawberry in there, but look at the way that the crust, like the graham cracker crust is like sprinkled on it. Piece of art. Sonic cheesecake glass. This is really good mouth art. Yeah. At the top of the hour, we're in the gloaming here in Baton Rouge. The Tigers have made a one run first inning stand up as we go to the fourth. The first of a three game series between LSU and Alabama. And what a beautiful sunset shot from Alex Box Stadium, Skip Bertman Field. Marceau has thrown 47 pitches and 33 of them have been over the plate. There's another one. T.J. Reeves, the left fielder, was thrown out by Marceau last time. He hits this sharply to the shortstop Thompson. And there's the first out. Alabama has had base runners. They've had runners in scoring position in the first three innings, but they are 0 for 4 in those situations, and they have stranded five runners so far. Now that's because Marceau has the ability to just uh, dig deep and get tougher in those situations. You know, most pitchers, good pitchers, great pitchers, have that mentality, Lynn. They're not going to let anybody pass third base. You know, you, know you can't be perfect and, and, and throw no hitters every game. People are going to get on base. Things are going to happen. But you have to have the mentality of I'm not letting anybody pass third, and Marceau does that as good as any Tiger. He also has induced a lot of ground ball outs. There's been only one fly ball out and six ground outs. Now here's a guy at the plate that I think I could throw strikes to. Davis Heller, six foot eight, 240 pounds. It gives you a little extra zone to work with. He loops this one into left center field for a base hit. And Davis Heller is two for two. Uh, Heller got the, the, the count in his favor, two balls and no strikes. Marshall tried to go fastball in, and look how Heller just kind of really pulls his hands into his belly button right there and kind of opens up and is able to muscle it through. A 5-for-20 hitter coming into the game has two base hits tonight. Heller was batting 100. This is his fourth start, his 13th appearance. He was 5-for-20. He's now 7-for-22. Actually, he was two for 20. So he's now four for 22. Jim Jarvis had a base hit last time. And he has hit safely now in seven straight games. That's the longest current streak for Alabama. One ball, one strike. On the Bama shortstop. It's a beautiful night at the ballpark.
Ground ball just out of the reach of the diving Drew Bianco. And one that found open space between Morgan and Bianco. So two balls not hit particularly sharply, but they have resulted in back to back singles. And once again, Ronnie, for the fourth straight inning, Alabama has a runner in scoring position. I think LSU Lynn's kind of taking the approach a lot like Coach Bertman used to do back in the day, which is if you're going to get beat, get beat by the guys hitting seven, eight, nine in the order because we're going to pitch the, the other guys tougher. We're not going to give them as many fastballs. We're going to, you know, pattern two pitch them. They're going at these, uh, at, at Heller, at Jarvis. They have the lower averages. They're hitting down the order, but they're actually coming through right now. Marceau has allowed five base hits. Alabama has out hit LSU and now another hit to right. That's uh, thrown back quickly by Sanford. The bases are loaded after Reeves grounded out to short. Heller, Jarvis, and Rose have singled in succession. And there's a crimson tide at every base. How about seven, eight, and nine in the order? All went back to back to back hits for Alabama. That doesn't happen very often. Six hits for Alabama. LSU's three hits came in the first inning and produced the game's only run. What you see with Heller not being able to run real well, he's not able to do anything with it. He's got to go station to station. So even though you have three hits, which is a rarity in baseball, you don't see many three hit innings. Alabama still doesn't have a run. And so they've got work to do. They'll get that work started with the top of the order. Peyton Wilson, who has grounded out twice. Veteran pitching coach Allen Dunn out to have a word. There is no bullpen activity for LSU. By the way, Allen Dunn, former Alabama Crimson Tide player. He was a, a great one. Played a 1983 College World Series team for Alabama. So it's always got to be fun for him facing his alma mater. Wilson is the second best hitter measured by average for Alabama. He swings at the first pitch which sort of leaked away from him. Marceau, the master craftsman, on the mound. Wilson is hitting 250 with the bases loaded. He turns on that one. Heads up. Look out down there in the right field bleachers. That was a missile shot. Usually you get one of those high, you know, fly balls into the stands. That one was a liner. Marceau has fanned four. And he'll be looking for a big one here. Wilson is prone to strike out. He's done it 34 times. Malazzo keeps it at his feet. Wilson probably should have just stayed in there right there, Lynn. He might have been able to get a hit by pitch. Instead, he kind of jumped out of the way. As a hitter, you got to know the situation. Bases are loaded. You're down in the count. You get hit by a pitch. That's an RBI and a run. A looper out to right. It's going to carry to Sanford. He comes up throwing. Malazzo's got it out at the plate. Mitchell Sanford unleashes a laser from right field on the fly to Malazzo, who played and hung tough at the dish for the tag out. Yeah, that's not knowing your outfielders. Alabama, this ball's hit shallow. That's the best arm on LSU's team as far as outfielders are concerned, and he threw a perfect strike to Malazzo. So once again, LSU escapes a run. We move on. Tigers won. Crimson Tide nothing. Bottom of the fourth coming your way next.
Verizon Business Unlimited starts with America's most reliable network. Then we add the speed of Verizon 5G and offer plans as low as $30 per line. More businesses choose Verizon than any other network. We are open and ready for you. As soon as I walked in and saw the castle, you just get that feeling. Everyone is always reminding people to follow their social distancing rules. I am so thankful that Disney World is open. Still the same magic of Disney that I've always loved. The Harry's Razor is not the same. Because some of us are not the same. Our close shave comes from our five German engineered blades designed to start sharp and stay sharp. And we never upcharge you for high quality. So for those of us who don't want just the same, Harry's Razors are here. Harry's, not the same. Available in store and at harrys.com. Did you know that every single flush flings odors onto your soft surfaces? Then they get released back into the air, so you smell them later. Ew, right? Mm. That's why Febreze created small spaces. Press firmly and watch it get to work. Unlike the leading cone, small spaces continuously eliminates odors in the air and on surfaces, so they don't come back for 45 days. Just imagine what it can do with other odors. Lyuza right there. LSU got a run in the first. Alabama has had at least one base runner in scoring position in every inning, but has not been able to push across a run. As you see, a picture of the old new bridge <laughs> in Baton Rouge. That, that's the, quote, new bridge, but it's over half a century it's old. Over 50 years old, and it's still the, the new bridge. By the way, they're talking about redoing the old bridge and remodeling it. I wonder if it'll become the new bridge when it's done. I don't know. We're coming your way from a town that's at least one bridge short <laughs> over the Mississippi yeah. River. And look, by the time, if they ever did get a third bridge, by the time they got done, they'd need a fourth. Kate Doty at the plate for the Tigers. He had a base hit in the first. He has reached base now safely in 12 consecutive games. And he came out of his shoes with that swing. Somehow tonight through the first inning, the second inning, the third inning and the fourth inning. LSU has managed to keep the fox out of the chicken coop. But that fox has been very close in each of those four innings. Yeah, there have been stressful innings by Landon Omar. So he's raised his game every time he's needed to. But that that will wear you down that you know you can't just look at the pitch count. It's what you had to do in those in those numbers of pitches. Alabama has stranded seven runners. They are one for six with runners in scoring position and they've had runners in scoring position in every inning. Three balls two strikes on LSU's third baseman. Tyler Ross to the plate. A liner to left and Doty is two for two. Sometimes the sound of the bat making contact with the ball can tell the story, and that was one of those times. Boy, Doty just loves pitches up in the zone. He's very good high, high ball, fastball hitter. Sometimes guys have trouble with a pitch up around the letters. You know, maybe they get under it. Don't get it. Even not, not Doty. He's able to stay on top of that baseball, barrel it up. He has worn out a path tonight of balls in the left center field gap. That's the first hit since Doty's base hit in the first. Jordan Thompson takes that breaking ball high. He fly to right field in the first. The young LSU shortstop. Palmineri looking on. The maskless pulmonary. All the all the coaches tonight, and I guess moving forward, all without masks. 
hadn't seen Eddie Smith's face, number 55, the hitting coach of Paul Maneri in a while. You know, it's uh, good to see those guys. LSU has one more home game schedule. That's Tuesday against Northwestern State out of the Southland Conference. And then we'll conclude the season at Texas A&M on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of next week. To second for one, to first for Ooh. two. That's well done. How about that turn? And a really fine throw by the second baseman. Ooh. Peyton Wilson had some zip on that relay. I mean, watch this throw. Nice feed right here from third, but watch Peyton Wilson at second. I mean, that is a bullet. When it's fast and slow motion, you know it's fast. That was special. Both teams have turned a double play. Here's Sanford, who was part of LSU's double play, with an outfield assist in the top of the inning. Sanford struck out in the second. Sanford had a two run single in LSU's victory over Louisiana Tech earlier in the week. No runs, six hits, no errors for. Alabama one run four hits and an error for LSU two gone in the fourth for the Tigers Sanford lays off the 2 2 pitch good take right there in a change up of the zone now Sanford going to get an opportunity to see something good. That's tight and maybe downstairs and Sanford becomes a two out base runner with a wall. Surprised uh, at the respect that Ross showed Sanford right there once he got to 2 2 he went off speed off speed and way out of the zone instead of just challenging him with nobody on base and instead draws a walk which Sanford can run a little bit and Beloso's uh, had a few good swings the last couple of games. He smacked one on a line to the warning track in right field last time. It was caught by Hammeter. That's another screamer which sends the bullpen dancing. Paul Maneri looking on for LSU. Ronnie, he is only three victories short of another major milestone in his career, and that's 1,500 career victories. 1,497 right now. We'd like to get all three this weekend. Veloso hits it the other way. Denton, the third baseman, was able to make that play. That was not an easy pickup by Denton. But the out is made at first base. And we go to the fifth. LSU got the run in the first, and that's where we stand right now. Runs have been hard to come by. 
may I have your attention? Pull up a seat, begin the lesson. Ba-da-dum, let's go. Oh, oh, I got that. You got that. We got that. Boom. You have to put your health and wellness first or you can't do anything else. I've lost 91 pounds. I'm living proof that WW works. You're going to see success. You're going to see results. See why we're ranked number one for weight loss. Get ready for summer with three months free. A lot of folks ask me how to get their dishes as clean as possible. I tell them, try Cascade Platinum, plus the power of Oxy. It breaks down food soils to clean up to 99% of visible and invisible food residue for a hygienic clean you can see and feel. Cascade, plus the power of Oxy. Moment of truth. The dishes are clean, but are they dry? Yeah, they are. Thanks to Cascade Power Dry Rinse Aid from the number one most trusted brand. Get your dishes clean, dry, done with Cascade Detergent plus Power Dry. Welcome back, everyone. Landon Marceau has made some big strikeout pitches when he has needed to, when there have been runners in scoring position. And we play here in the fifth inning. Alabama has six base hits. They've had some nice swings, but Marceau, when it's mattered the most, has pitched his best. Most of those have come from the seven, eight, nine hitters in the lineup. I think five to six, if I'm not mistaken. You are, you are correct. Have come from the bottom of the order. The so. only other hit was a double by Prater in the four hole. Marceau struck out a batter in the first. He struck out a batter in the second. He struck out two batters in the third. Hammeter at the plate for the third time. He's been hit by a pitch. And he was a strikeout victim in his second at bat. There was a time in the uh, late 90s, Lynn, where the LSU Alabama in baseball was maybe the biggest rivalry in the entire uh, SEC. I mean, you know, go back to 1997, LSU and Alabama played for the national championship. Jim Wells, the former LSU assistant, was the head coach at Alabama back then, and Skip Bertman was in the dugout. And uh, those were some fantastic teams going back 96, 97. Remember 99, Alabama got the best of LSU in the Super Regional over there to advance to the College World Series. It packed ballparks and, and big time rivalries for about seven or eight years between LSU and Alabama. Well, the Crimson Tide once again puts a base runner aboard as Hammeter delivers hit number seven off of Marceau. You just wonder, Ronnie, how long the Tigers can play with fire and not get burned. Here's Zane Denton, Alabama's best hitter. Twice he has rolled out to Bianco. Marceau keeps struggling with that 1 0 pitch. You know, it's not that you have to throw a strike the first pitch, but you definitely have to throw a strike one of the first two pitches. You want to know you don't you want to be at least one and one. Marceau now finding himself down the count 2 0 a bunch. The runner is on the move from first base and Denton is swinging and fouled it off. Marceau has walked one. He has struck out four. Denton takes a very close pitch for a ball. It's three and one. Well, that was borderline. A good change up by Marceau. Really mixing nicely. There's a 2 1 change up, and it's just below the zone. I think that was the correct call, though. Alabama put two base runners aboard in the first. 
The Crimson Tide had runners at second and third in the second. They left a base runner at second base in the third. They had the bases loaded with one out in the fourth before Wilson flied to right field and Sanford cut loose with a strike for the tag at the plate. Hammeter has singled to open the fifth. The three two pitch Hammeter is on the move. A liner skips through on the left side. Here comes Alabama again. The Crimson Tide already have eight hits off Landon Marceau in four innings. He went down and got that one nicely. Zane Denton went, reached out. Six foot, 200 pound sophomore out of Brentwood, Tennessee. Really nice job of barreling it up backside the other way. The LSU's bullpen continues to watch. Here's Sam Prater. He has walked and doubled. He hit one over the head of Cruz in center field in the third inning. The infield is at double play depth. Ball one. So Ronnie for the fifth consecutive inning. Alabama has pulled LSU to the edge of the cliff. But the Tigers are hanging on. At least for the moment. Lazo comes up throwing to third out on the close play at third base as Alabama tried to gamble oh on that my. ball that rolled just a few feet away from Malazzo and that is a huge out for LSU second time tonight that Alabama has been thrown out on the base pass once at home that when the ball did not get far enough away from Malazzo he's got a fantastic arm and Alabama just running themselves out of scoring opportunities. There's the tag on the back of the helmet. Out stealing as Hammeter tried to move up on a ball to the right side. And a ground ball mm. up the middle. That is going to be another base hit. Denton is on his way to third. The throw there is late. Three consecutive singles for Alabama. It's still not but a run. nothing to show for it. Second inning in a row. That they've had three consecutive singles and don't get a run. Now we'll see if they produce here, but again, you don't run yourself out of the inning. And Alabama would have first and second, no outs with a hitter up in a 2 0 count. Well, that hitter just hit a base hit up the middle. You'd have tied the ball game. So this is, uh, we'll see if they can't get him in from third with the runner at third less than two outs. Or so at 71 pitches. He has allowed. Nine base hits in four and a third innings. There is nobody warming up for LSU. You have not seen many games where you've seen a pitcher give up nine hits at four and a third and no runs. Diodati swings and flicks it foul into the mid of Malazzo. Crowd groans in complaint. That ball must have been just a little bit inside. Diodati likes to call though, because he was a, I think he was fooled by that slider. It just was a little bit in. He has fanned twice, says Diodati. That might have gotten a piece of yeah, most got, of the people at the plate. Got him right on the foot. A ping pong shot here we see the foul ball right off his foot and then rolled towards the Alabama dugout. Hmm. The one two pitch 
swing and a miss. Diodati has fanned three times and Marceau comes closer to escaping one more time. This is the same breaking ball that he threw that he took for a ball. That time he swung over the top of it. And the hat trick for Diodati is sometimes, Lynn, there's just matchups, man. There's just pitchers that you don't see the ball very well. And and you have these kinds of nights. And luckily for Marceau, he, he had the right guy up at the time he needed to. Here's T.J. Reeves. He has grounded out twice. Runners remain on the corners. That is foul on the left side. T.J. Reeves out of Birmingham, Alabama. 5'10", 205-pound junior. Can Marceau escape for the second straight inning after giving up three consecutive base hits. He's one pitch away from doing it. I'm going to give him the nickname Houdini if he can somehow I was get one more strike. Exactly the same <laughs> thing. Can he shuck the chains here? The 0 2. Fly ball, right side, long run for Sanford. He is under it. He's got it. And once again, LSU works its way out of a hot spot, casting ice on a would be rally. Alabama is one for eight with runners in scoring position and has stranded nine batters so far. One nothing still, LSU. If you want to go from, I don't got it, to, I got this, well, then get this. A deliciously bold, smooth espresso drink from Dunkin'. Like a caramel macchiato, mocha, or oat milk latte. Take a sip of, you got this, with Dunkin' espresso drinks. Order ahead, plus earn rewards. America runs on Dunkin'. Come on, Steve. You know as well as we do. Cat's gonna cat. Lie down. Mm -hmm. This feels amazing. It's called purple, and it's meticulously designed to support the human body. Cool. Save on mattresses, pillows, and more at purple.com slash TV. My parents have yet to meet their first grandson. And being deaf, they didn't hear his first words. But because of live captions in Google Meet, they were able to experience them. That line score you see is correct. No runs, nine hits for Alabama. One run, four hits for LSU, and three of those four came in the first inning. LSU has been walking the tightrope every inning, working without a net, but so far, balance has been maintained. How many times will you ever see a team collect three consecutive base hits in back to back innings and get no runs. That's what's occurred tonight for the Crimson Tide. Bianco Malazzo and Morgan for LSU against Tyler Ross. I, I don't we don't have this statistic Lynn but I'm just going to say I don't remember in the 25 years you and I have been doing LSU baseball games a, a, three hits and back to back innings and no runs allowed like I don't think that's ever happened before. that's incredible. It's a rarity when you get three hits in an inning, don't score, but to do it in back to back innings. That's, right. I mean, you might as well go buy a lottery ticket. And to have runners in scoring position in five straight innings without scoring is awfully frustrating for Alabama, but credit LSU's defense and Marceau, who has the ability to make the big pitch at the proper time. Alabama is going to start its bullpen. There's a check swing strike. 
There is some bullpen activity now for Alabama. The echo chased one right there. Instead of having a 3 1 count, now he's got a 2 2 count and got a guard against the breaking ball. He lined to center field last time. And he's called out on strikes. That's number four for Ross. It's a good 2 2 right here. I mean, that is boom. Knee level down and away. Bianco got discombobulated when he did that check swing on the 2 1 up in his eyes. Malazzo struck out in the third. Ronnie, he's worked hard, has Malazzo, in trying to correct the habit of stepping dramatically toward third base mm -hmm. in the swing. And he's he's staying more of in a hitter in a hitter's position lately. Well, what he's still done, has a tendency to lean that way, but well, what he's done he, is he's, he's overcorrected. Hard. Yeah, he put his left foot in front of his right foot in a closed stance position before he was slightly open to start and then went way open. You see how that left foot, his left foot is just a little bit ahead of the right. But he still has that habit of opening the hips and just no matter where the pitch is, just automatically that first movement is to open those hips and to start with the ball foot going towards third. Ever so slightly. Two balls, two strikes, one out, nobody on base. You see a lot of great hitters. You know, I think of like Dwight Evans, who used to over exaggerate for the Boston Red Sox. He was pigeon toed on both feet. He literally had both feet kind of pointed in, didn't hardly took any stride whatsoever to make himself stay close with that shoulder and front side. Malazzo, for the second time, is left at the plate on strikes. Back to back strikeouts of Bianco and Malazzo for Tyler Ross. He's got five. Strikeouts on the evening. And Ronnie, for a guy who came in with an ERA very high, certainly Tyler Ross has pitched extremely well tonight. Well, he was a little wobbly the first couple of innings. LSU got great swings on him, but only one run to show for it. And then now they've let him settle in. And he's hit a little rhythm and stride. And he's gained some momentum, but now he's going to face. The, the meat of this order, which one through four, LSU's one through four is, is up there with just about anybody. Look at Trey Morgan's SEC rank in base hits. Number one. He's at a double tonight. Tied for first and run scored. LSU has had only one hit since the first inning. And that was Cade Doty's base hit in the fourth. That might be the only hole in his swing. Well, that's a guy in Morgan who just was, is a little over pumped. You know, he's been so good. He gets a 2 0 count. He probably made the decision anything close, I'm swinging, and the ball was, it was down and down and out of the zone. The plate coverage that Morgan has is as good as anybody on pitches on the outside part of the plate. You're right. He's able to stay on balance. He's not bending over. He's not over exaggerated. He's able to get that fastball down and away. He's able to hit it the other way. Able to be quick enough inside to guard against somebody who tries to go in at the belt. Heller makes the play at first base. That was a very good pitch. From Tyler Ross to retire Trey Morgan. It's the first time, make it the second time tonight that LSU has failed to get a base runner. And we go on to the sixth inning. LSU's lead is a scant 1 0 over Alabama. If you want to go from I don't got it to I got this, well, then get this. 
a deliciously bold, smooth espresso drink from Dunkin'. Like a caramel macchiato, mocha, or oat milk latte. Take a sip of You Got This with Dunkin' Espresso Drinks. Order ahead plus earn rewards. America runs on Dunkin'. A lot of people wanted me to compare the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 to the iPad Pro. So here we go. The Surface Pro has a built-in kickstand. Now with the iPad Pro, this is the Surface type cover. It clicks and attaches. I love that click. This is the iPad keyboard. It's a lot heavier. With the Surface, you have all kinds of ports. iPad has one. You want to be this guy? iPad Pro is just a tablet. Surface is a full computer and a tablet. And now, the price. Is Spencer eating real food? Well, dogs didn't have it this good back in the day. Not now, Alfie. Maybe Jack can play once he's finished. Caesar wholesome bowls. Sometimes I'm alone, like no one ever knows. Then you take me by the hand. I feel better again. When you smile, the sun peeks through the clouds And I feel better now, oh, I feel better now do, 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 do. A pair of junior right-handers oppose each other as the starting pitchers And Ronnie, let's look at Ross, or excuse me, Ross and Marceau side by side Well, you know, Marceau, I think, had the better stuff, Lynn uh, he's had all three pitches going, but look at the numbers. Nine hits allowed to only four, and that, and he's been able to just kind of uh, be a magician tonight. Call him Copperfield, whatever you want. Hasn't given up a run. Wonder how long he can continue to keep that up. Both starters have 77 pitches to their credit tonight. Marceau 77 and been a lot more intense Indeed. than Ross's. Heller at the plate. This big first baseman hasn't played a lot this year, but he was two for 20 coming into the game. He's two for two tonight. Two balls and a strike. Heller represents the biggest target. And he makes a bid for another base hit and gets one. How about that? A guy who was two for 20 is three for three. And once again, Alabama is peppering the baseball against Marceau. There are so many things happening in this happening in this game that are against the law of averages. I mean, it's just just tell it like it is. I mean, we've got seven, eight, nine hole hitters for Alabama that are having career days and then we've got Landon Marceau who's given up now seven hits in the last two plus innings and hasn't given up a run yet. I mean it's just weird what's going on. Marceau will have one play and that's over to Morgan at first base. Jim Jarvis who was two for two lays down the bunt. And pushes Heller into scoring position. The seven, eight, and nine hitters tonight are six for eight against Marceau. You now that's not how you teach it, but he got it done. It ended up being a great bunt by Jarvis, but it was almost like a half swing slap. Here's Caden Rose. He has a sub 200 batting average, but he's one for two tonight. How long can LSU keep Alabama on the leash? Now LSU's got tremendous confidence in Marceau. As you mentioned, only at 83 pitches. He's thrown, you know, 110 plus this year. And they don't even have anybody up tossing in the bullpen. So clearly they they they're they're fine and not concerned at all. Marceau finds the strike zone that levels the count.
Rose does have four home runs this year. A runner at second base for the umpteenth time tonight for Alabama. Ronnie, in all six innings, Alabama has had a runner at least at second base. Rose struck out in the second. He had a base hit in the fourth. He's got the tying run at second base. Marceau delivers the 2 1. Ooh, Inside, that almost, that almost hit him. Yep. Three balls and a strike. I mean, how did that not catch any of the jersey? <laughs> Marceau has walked one batter that came in the first. He also hit a batter in that inning. This foul ball. Got uh, Malazzo on the foot. Ronnie these ten hits allowed and we're only in the sixth inning represent the most that Marceau has yielded this year. How about that you give up the most base hits you've done this season yet you still have a shutout. Again part of that bizarre numbers group. The three two pitch. Nubbed off the end of the bat. Marceau is covering. Out at first. Two gone. And Heller lumbers up to third. Well, you know how you know, Lynn, how I'm a big proponent for the head first slide. I mean, I've, I've made that except well at known, first base, but not at first base. That is a no, no. You 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 absolutely <laughs> slow down whether you slide head first or feet first. You slow down when you slide. You're faster if you just run through the bag. Well, at first base, there's no reason to ever slide. And that time he did and, and it was close even with the slide. I mean, what if he's running? Full out. Who knows? Let's see how LSU plays this. There's a good hitter at the plate in Peyton Wilson. First base is unoccupied. Two outs, a runner at third. Wilson is the second best hitter on the team. Steve Reich that levels the count. Wilson has grounded out twice. And he sent a fly ball with the bases loaded out to right field that Sanford caught and then unleashed a strike to the plate where Malazzo was waiting to put the tag on the Alabama runner. Ground ball right side. Morgan's got it. Marceau makes the play at first base. Once again. Working without a net, LSU walks the tightrope. No runs, 10 hits for Alabama. One run, four hits for LSU. We go to the bottom of the sixth. I'm here to compare the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 to the iPad Pro. Surface Pro has a built-in kickstand. iPad Pro iPad Pro is just a tablet. Surface is a full computer and a tablet. And now, the price. Nobody builds 5G like Verizon builds 5G. Because we're the engineers who built the most reliable network in America. Thousands of smarter towers with the 5G coverage you need. Broader spectrum for faster 5G speeds. Next generation servers with superior network reliability. Because the more you do with 5G, the more your network matters. It's us pushing us. It's Verizon versus Verizon. And who wins? You.
Allergies don't have to be scary. Spraying Flonase daily stops your body from overreacting to allergens all season long. Psst, psst, all good. At Casper, we're delivering better sleep to homes everywhere. With a mattress so supportive and comfortable, it was awarded Best Overall Mattress by U.S. News. So, wherever home is for you, now's your chance to let great sleep be a part of it. Save 15% on select mattresses, 10% on bedding, and more during the Memorial Day sale. In-store or at Casper.com. One run in the first inning still stands up for the LSU Tigers. They'll try to get to the scoreboard again in the bottom of the sixth. Fans of all stripes here today. Those youngsters at the ballpark having a good time as they anticipate school being out in a few days. Here we go. Dylan Cruz, Gavin Dugas, Cade Doty for the Tigers. Against Tyler Ross. He's still popping the mid, isn't he? Yeah, 90 miles an hour, and Ross is really finding a good rhythm on that outside corner. He's He's been able to just have a nice, consistent motion and pound the fastball away to righties. Dylan Cruz is one for two. He had an infield hit in the first and struck out in the third. Ross has struck out five. He has walked two. This will be pitch number 80. And he gets Cruz. And he seems to have Dylan Cruz's number at least in the last two at bats. Got him with some good off speed. Look at that breaking ball. That I mean that you cannot throw it in a better location. Gavin Dugas has driven in the only run of this game. You know Ross's numbers last couple outings have been very good and uh, he's got an ERA that's near six coming into the game but he did have a game in the SEC went seven innings against Kentucky and he only gave up one hit and was absolutely dominant in that performance against the Wildcats. And that was a few weeks ago and they had a little better record. So he's got it in him to have these big moments. Dugas waves that two in a row. Ross has struck out three of the last four batters. One ball, two strikes. All more impressive with what Ross is doing, Lynn, on the road. Big crowd at the box. Gave up a run in the first inning. LSU stung a few balls in the second that didn't that get it, didn't fluster him at all, at all. He has struck out four of the last five. He has made Cruz and Dugas look helpless at the plate here in this inning. I mean, he's facing two of the four best hitters on LSU's team and making them look silly. The junior out of New Jersey, Middleton, New Jersey. Kate Doty is two for two. Singles in the first and fourth. LSU over the years uh, back in the day had some pretty good players out of the state of New Jersey. Former captain Tookie, jo uh, Tookie Johnson of the 91 National Championship team at the time of his career ended. He was the all-time hits leader back then. Brett Laxton, who was the MVP in the 1993 College World Series uh, championship game where he struck out 16 against Wichita State, another product. There's been many others, but that's still a record, isn't it? I think so, yeah. And of course, Brett, a big part of uh, Marucci, uh, baseball bat company, been working there for 15 plus years. Ross has struck out seven tonight. 
four of them lately. And that represents a career high in strikeouts. The 3 1 to Doty. Lifted foul out of play. Talking about Brett Laxton, I knew his father, Bill Laxton, who pitched with Seattle. He pitched with Philadelphia. But you knew him because he played for the Alexandria Aces. Trying to get a career restarted after a few major league seasons. He was a left hander. 3 2 pitch. Lifted very high in the air to shallow left field. Reeves is under it. And he's got it for the third out. Seven in a row. Retired by Ross. LSU clinging to a one run lead. Nobody builds 5G like Verizon builds 5G. Because we're the engineers who built the most reliable network in America. Thousands of smarter towers with the 5G coverage you need. Broader spectrum for faster 5G speeds. Next generation servers with superior network reliability. Because the more you do with 5G, the more your network matters. It's us pushing us. It's Verizon versus Verizon. And who wins? You. A lot of people wanted me to compare the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 to the iPad Pro. So here we go. The Surface Pro has a built-in kickstand. Now with the iPad Pro, this is the Surface type cover. It clicks and attaches. I love that click. This is the iPad keyboard. It's a lot heavier. With the Surface, you have all kinds of ports. iPad has one. You want to be this guy? iPad Pro is just a tablet. Surface is a full computer and a tablet. And now, the price. What's your favorite cowboy call, Chandler? Yeehaw! <laughs> I feel like your cowboy call would be, yippee! Excuse me? <laughs> yippee! You literally texted me that today. <laughs> I did text you yippee today. Sonic Twisted Texan Cheeseburger or a footlong coney. Yee-wee! Truthfully, it's frustrating to see how fast dust reappears. But dusting with a cloth is a pain. And dealing with a bulky vacuum is such a hassle. Ugh! Ugh. So now, we use our Swiffer Sweeper and dusters. The fluffy fibers, they pick up dust easily, grabbing it in all those hard to reach places. Gotcha. Ooh. And for our floors, Sweeper's textured cloths lock all kinds of dirt, dust, and pet hair. Unlike my vacuum, it sneaks under and around places. Look at that. Dust free and hassle free. Stop cleaning, start Swiffering. There's been one run scored in this game. It came in the first inning, and we are 1 0 LSU in the seventh. Ronnie, let's look at uh, what has transpired for Alabama offensively. It has not scored, even though it's got 10 base hits. Marceau has struck out five Alabama hitters, many of them with runners in scoring position. He's walked only one, and Bama has left 10 on base in what has to be, to this point certainly, a very frustrating offensive evening for Alabama with chance after chance after chance. But so far, nobody's crossed the plate. Yeah, that's not a typo. Zero runs, even though they've got 10 hits. But Marceau has... Uh, He's been very good with, when runners have gotten in the scoring position, and he hasn't hurt, hurt himself, only the one walk. That's big. Hammeter, Denton, and Prater, perhaps for the last time in this game, coming to the plate, two, three, and four. A looper out to right center field. That's down for hit number 11. This is amazing. <laughs> Fastball in on the hands. Hammeter able to just, uh, ball was elevated. It wasn't in a great spot. He took advantage of that elevated fastball and just found the Bermuda Triangle out there in right center on that after that parachute just fell perfectly. Now LSU will finally get its first. Uh, Kevin Fontenot finally getting up to start tossing. This is the most hits that Marceau has ever allowed. 11 base hits. Almost number 12 there. 10 of the 11 have been singles, I believe. I think Prater has the only extra base hit, that double in the third. 
Let's see if Marceau goes with a changeup right here. He went fastball away. He yanked it foul. Hit it sharply. You would think. Zane Denton had a base hit last time. He's hit safely in four games. And he's one for three tonight. This is the best hitter for Bama. That change up just missed a little bit. It was Fontenot getting hot. And remember, he's more than capable of going the rest of the way. If they decide to put him in there here in the next batter or two, he can he can pitch the last three innings. An off speed pitch and a good one. Back to back change ups. Alabama is one game under 500 in the SEC at 11 and 12. 28 victories, 17 defeats for the Crimson Tide. The LSU is six games under 500 in the league at 9 and 15 and 30 and 18 overall. Back to back to back changeups. They went three changeups in a row. Not wanting to throw a fastball to Prater. I'm sorry, to Denton. Prater is on deck. He's two for two with a double and a single and a walk. <laughs> Hammeter at first base, nobody out. Alabama has put its lead batter on base over the course of the last three innings. And each time Marceau and the LSU defense has managed to cast ice on a rally. The 2 2 pitch. Oh. Swing and a miss. Malazzo whips it down to first base. The runner gets back. Another fantastic pitch by Marceau to the left handed hitter. Pulmonary looks like he's going to go get him right here. That was a, a way to finish the night for Marceau if that in fact is it. Good breaking ball and when he needed it because uh, Denton battled him pretty well. Devin Fontenot warmed up and ready to go and you can almost read Pulmonary's lips. You could. He said, I, I think so. You know, he, he, said, he said, are you tired? And I think he said, yeah. Marceau said, yeah, I, I, it might be time. And Pulmonary yeah. said, I think so. And patted yeah. him on the rump. And we're going to have a new pitcher here. So Marceau gives up a career high 11 hits, but leads after throwing six and a third innings of shutout baseball. The crowd is on its feet in appreciation. We will be back. Can LSU hold the rope here? One nothing Tigers. Your next memory is out there. It might be a small one or a giant leap. Maybe it's the memory of you alone or one with him or them. It could feel like magic or it might just warm your heart. Your next memory is out there. It's just waiting to be made. To new memories, Hilton and our family of hotels. Design isn't just for designers. It's for everyone. With Canva, designing anything is easy. Canva has all my content creation needs covered. It's flexible, fun to use, and free. There are thousands of professional templates to help get you started. So you can create, customize, and share your designs in just a few clicks. Our whole team uses Canva to create professional marketing material. It's our secret weapon for design. Start designing for free at canva.com. If ever there was a closer situation, this is it. One nothing. Alabama has applied pressure in every inning to LSU, but the Tigers lead it one nothing. They've got a runner at first base with one out in the seventh, does Alabama. And here is Devin Fontenot. Two and two record, but he has 
allowed only 16 hits in 24 innings. He has struck out 29. This year, control has been a problem. 18 walks, that's excessive in 24 innings. But there have been times when Devin Fontenot has lived up to All-America status. This well, is very likely to be his final year in an LSU uniform. This could be his final appearance in uh, this stadium. Yeah, you're right. Only these three games this weekend against Alabama. And then on Tuesday, LSU finishes out its home schedule for 2021 against Northwestern State out of the Southland Conference. And, yeah, Devin Fondo most likely will be asked to go the rest of the way. And if he does, more than likely he won't pitch the rest of the weekend. So, you know, he's got a lot of emotion and adrenaline going right now. He is a very recent graduate of LSU. Fontenot will throw hard. And he has a devastating slider. That one high and inside. Fontenot is not a guy who changes speeds very often. That was a 94 mile an hour pitch. In 90, 93 to 95 is usually about the zone of the first inning or so, and then breaking ball is hard. Ground ball left side, grabbed by the shortstop, steps on the back, throws to first, double play. The Tigers do it again. That's the second double play LSU has turned. Fontenot comes out of the bullpen, induces a double play ball off the bat of Sam Prater. Thompson takes it himself. Steps on the bag with the left foot and with two steps to spare, gets the runner at first. It remains 1 0. Your next memory is out there. It might be a small one or a giant leap. Maybe it's a memory of you alone or one with him or them. It could feel like magic or it might just warm your heart. Your next memory is out there. It's just waiting to be made. To new memories, Hilton and our family of hotels. Design isn't just for designers. It's for everyone. With Canva, designing anything is easy. Canva has all my content creation needs covered. It's flexible, fun to use, and free. There are thousands of professional templates to help get you started. So you can create, customize, and share your designs in just a few clicks. Our whole team uses Canva to create professional marketing material. It's our secret weapon for design. Start designing for free at canva.com. Welcome, may I have your attention. Pull up a seat, begin the lesson. ba da let's go. Oh, I got that. You got that. We got that. Boom. The LSU pitchers have thrown an 11 hitter tonight. <laughs> More importantly, a no runner. And the only marker in this game came in the first inning. Tyler Ross works in the seventh here as the Alabama starter. Ronnie, well, this is a terrific performance by this young man. If I'd have told you after the first inning that you know, or asked you who's gonna who's gonna be the last uh, start and pitcher standing. You know, Ross or, or Marceau. You would be surprised to think Ross because LSU first uh, six seven at bats hit hit the ball sharply about five or six of those. But Ross has just really been steady, dominated, has hung zeros ever since the first, and here he is with a chance to uh, give out. You know, keep Alabama in it for six more outs. Thompson, Sanford, and Beloso will come to the plate here in the seventh. Strike one to the LSU shortstop who has flied to right and bounced into an around the horn double play. Nice breaking ball right there. That's so big if you can flip a curve ball in to start off a hitter. Well that Especially, pitch over the last three or four innings has really developed. I mean when you can pitch backwards which is what that is there's another one. You know you you've got a hitter up there that's totally looking for that 90 mile an hour fastball not expecting the breaking ball and you just simply simply just throw one in there nice and easy. Ross has limited LSU to four hits 
And three of those came in the first inning. Morgan is one for two tonight. Cruz is one for three with two strikeouts. Dugas is 0 for two with a sacrifice fly. Doty is two for three. Both of those hits have been singles. Thompson is 0 for two. Sanford is 0 for one. Veloso is 0 for two. Bianco is 0 for two. Malazzo is 0 for two. And there is strikeout number eight, the most that Ross has ever had in a game. This might be his best sequence of the game. Breaking ball, perfect. Another one, 0 2. Waste one, spikes a breaking ball. And then this is his best fastball, 93 here in the eighth in, in the seventh inning. 93, that was the fastest pitch he's thrown all day long. And he threw it right down at the, at the knees. Wow. It's like a fine line, getting better with. Better as the game goes on. He has struck out five of the last seven batters. There's a liner to right field, and guess what? Sanford hit it well, but his counterpart in right field grabbed the liner, and there are quickly two outs. Here's Beloso now coming to the plate. He lined out to right and grounded to third. Nine batters in a row have been retired by Ross. He has walked two. He has struck out a career high eight. He has allowed four hits on a single run that coming in the first. So now Ross looks into the dugout. The catcher and pitcher both look into the dugout. Get the uh, get the number sequence. Look at their wristband, and then it looks like the catcher maybe gives location. So that part's strange to me. Look at the pitcher and the catcher. They both look into the dugout. They get whatever the number sequence is. Then they look at their wristband, and then but yet the catcher still gives signals. <laughs> Not to mention the catcher has an earpiece. Uh, he's got a, a wire running out the back of his helmet. So not only is he looks at the signal looks at his wristband gives the signal. He's also got somebody talking to him in his ear. Veloso draws a four pitch base on balls with two outs. Has LSU had a one nothing victory this year. The answer is no. And it doesn't have one yet tonight. But through six and a half innings, that is the case. Well, this might be it. And it is. What a performance. Indeed, Tyler Ross with a spectacular outing. Six and two thirds. But he will leave trailing one nothing. We will have a new pitcher and we will come back to talk about it in a moment as play resumes. In just a few seconds, we go to the bottom of the seventh with the score one nothing, LSU. New pitcher for Alabama. Back in a moment with more on the SEC ESPN Network. What's your favorite cowboy call, Chandler? Yeehaw! <laughs> I feel like your cowboy call would be yippee. Excuse me. <laughs> yippee, yippee! You literally texted me that today. <laughs> I did text you yippee today. Sonic Twisted Texan Cheeseburger or a footlong coney. I'm what's called a coda. My parents were both born deaf. I was not. Live caption from Google helps us stay close. Your summer starts here. Time to save on a new Toyota and get out and have some fun. Catch a great deal today. During the Summer Starts Here sales event, get $750 customer cash on a new 2021 RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. Both teams have now gone to the bullpen once. William Freeman is the first reliever for Alabama with a two and one record. This is his 17th appearance. A two and a half ERA, 42 innings, only 34 hits allowed. He has struck out 32. His control has been terrific. He has walked only six. So William Freeman 
in a one-run game comes on in the seventh inning. Well, they describe him as a do-it-all arm. He served in many different capacities, a midweek starter, also a reliever. You see SEC baseball the last seven weekends, 47% of innings thrown by relievers. That's just, that's across the board. So that means they come on in about the, what, fifth inning or so. Across the board. That's pretty incredible. Well, tonight, both starters went deeper than that. Statistically, this has been one of the strangest games ever. Yes, I mean, that's that's a conference-wide statistic. Right. So, oh, just about half of all innings pitched in the last seven weeks have been by relievers. So that shows you that, A, there's tremendous depth, and that goes to the point with COVID, without roster limitations, you have teams pitching 18, 19, 20 guys over the course of the year. So you've got plenty of options and, and, and starting pitching. Coaches aren't letting them go that as long. They're not letting them throw, get the pitch counts way up there. They're being more cautious, and they have more options. Ross worked six and a third. He gave up just four hits, one run, two walks, a career-high eight strikeouts. The 2-0 to Bianco. Rammed into the left field corner. This is down a fair ball. Beloso chugging for third. He's being waved around by Nolan Kane. Here is, there is no throw. A big RBI double by Drew Bianco. And Cade Beloso kicked it into another gear, rounding second base. That is the first double of the year for Bianco. That's hard to believe, but he smashes this one into the left field corner. Now that's what you're supposed to do on a 2-0 pitch, right? Bianco sat dead red fastball, got a 90-mile-an-hour fastball, and if anything, you want to pull it foul even, and that time he was on time, jumped all over it. It was misplayed out there by Alabama, which allowed Beloso to score because uh, Nolan Kane was going to hold him at third, but with the error in left, they allowed him to score. Bianco has reached safely in 13 straight games. A huge RBI double rammed into the left field corner. Ronnie, that is his first extra base hit. Except for four homers. He had four homers, no doubles, and no triples before that double. Wow. Here's Malazzo, who has struck out twice at the bottom of the order. Alabama. Trailing now 2-0, a run in the first and a run in the seventh for the Tigers. That was a huge two-out hit by Bianco. And the Tigers score a run after Ross struck out Thompson and got Sanford on a liner. Came off of William Freeman, who's tied for the team lead in appearances. So it's a veteran pitcher who's had success, who's having a good year. ERA two and a half. And Bianco got the hitter's count. Boy, what a, it, you know, 2 0 3 1. That's what hitters dream of, those types of counts. Three balls, two strikes. On the LSU catcher, William Freeman. I would think Malazzo's going to get a fastball here. You, you don't want to walk Malazzo to face Morgan if you're Alabama. Time is called by Sam Prater behind the plate. That looked like one finger. Yep. And the pitch is much outside. Malazzo extends the inning and rolls it over to Trey Morgan. That was a costly walk right there. You got a 167 hitter, or you face the hottest LSU hitter. And a guy hitting close to 400 against SEC pitching. Trey Morgan has doubled. He has walked 
And he has rolled out to his counterpart at first base. There is uh, Tyler Ross who has pitched a whale of a game. He's working on that gum, isn't he? He is, but I mean, he had a couple of really nice outings this year that he can be proud of. And that was the, the Kentucky game when he went seven innings, only gave up one hit. And then this one here on the road at LSU. Six and two thirds innings pitched. Four hits, only one of the runs was earned. Three balls, no strikes to Morgan. Dylan Cruz is on deck. See Paul Maneri looking on knows this is a giant series for both teams but on Alabama I mean on LSU side they're desperately thinking hey if we go five and one in our last six and get the 14 wins we'll be into the NCAA tournament 13 they're on the bubble and they've got starts this weekend for the Tigers against Alabama figuring out a way not only to win the series but maybe trying to get the sweep. Freeman misses again. He has issued back to back walks. He has faced three batters and yielded an RBI double and, and a pair of walks. There's nobody up in the Alabama bullpen, Lynn. So this is it. It's, it's kind of a all on Freeman right here to kind of fix it. Well, they're going to get some people milling around, but Freeman's been, you know, just a red shirt senior, veteran pitcher out of the state of Alabama. Now you'll see a little action going. That's uh, Eddington starting to mill around, toss some. But Brad Brad Bohannon, the fourth year head coach, trying to uh, get his veteran pitcher back in line. LSU has won two out of its last three SEC series. It took two out of three in Oxford against Ole Miss. It lost two games in the Arkansas series, but it took the first two games in the Auburn series and looking to grab a narrow victory in game one against Alabama. Cruz at the plate. He's two for three with the bases loaded this year. LSU is 28 and two when leading after seven innings. The 1 0 to Cruz. That was a slower breaking pitch and it's good for a strike. Cruz had a first inning single since then he has struck out twice those came against Ross. Tiger faithful at full throat. Cruz looks at a low breaking pitch. Yeah, he, nice adjustment to lay off of it. That's been a pitch that times this year that Cruz would have chased. He started to swing and uh, chose not to. Two outs and a Tiger on every base. Short to first for the out. Jim Jarvis to Davis Heller. LSU though gets a clutch two out run scoring double from Drew Bianco his first double of the season. And that run extends LSU's lead to two to nothing as we go to the eighth on the SEC ESPN Network. Home to making your bed, planting yourself, and settling in. Home to your happy place. Are you putting off getting life insurance because you think it's complex, expensive, and time consuming? Are you concerned about leaving your family unable to afford the mortgage, college tuition, and medical expenses? Ethos is life insurance the human way. You can apply in minutes online at ethoslife.com. A 35-year-old can get $1 million in coverage for just $50 a month with Ethos, often without a medical exam. Don't put off the decision any longer. 
Apply in just 10 minutes. Go to ethoslife.com. Get a free personalized quote at ethoslife.com. Do you really want a mattress with a memory? Ugh, gross. Five years ago, I told you your mattress was awful. Remember this guy? Look at that. And we're still using raw eggs, yes. Save on mattresses, pillows, and more at purple.com slash TV. Behold, the Tree Dasher by Allbirds. The planet's first proper running shoe made from natural materials like, well, trees. Mile after mile after mile. The Tree Dasher keeps your feet going while reducing your carbon footprint. Break a sweat, not the planet. All birds. Your summer starts here. Time to save on a new Toyota and get out and have some fun. Catch a great deal today. During the Summer Starts Here sales event, get $750 customer cash on a new 2021 RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to Baton Rouge, everyone, on the SEC ESPN Network. One in the first for LSU, one in the seventh. And the Tigers, despite being out hit 11 to five, carry a two to nothing lead over Alabama in the first game of this series into the eighth inning. LSU has made some defensive changes. Giovanni DiGiacomo has moved to center field. Dylan Cruz remains in the game, but moves to right field. And Mitchell Sanford has left the game. DiGiacomo will bat in his position. DiGiacomo gets an immediate chance in center, and he's got it. Diodati flies to center field after striking out three times. Well, Giovanni DiGiacomo will give them definitely a uh, a little more juice out there in the outfield. He is the best center fielder has a tremendous speed and a lot of range and with a two run lead. Palmineri is going to go with that defense put Cruz back there in right field where he's comfortable. And ride Fontenot the rest of the way. The Giacomo will hit sixth. The 2-0 to Reeves is swung on and foul back. Let's check some SEC scores, shall we? Arkansas beat Tennessee. What a series that is. 6-5 the final. Razorbacks get a win over Tennessee. Florida nipped Georgia 4-3. That's a final in Gainesville. South Carolina leads Kentucky in the eighth inning 11-6. Ole Miss got a big win over Vanderbilt, three to one. Strike three called. After throwing two straight balls, Fontenot rips and roars for three straight strikes. Comes all the way back and pumping strikes, 93, nothing fancy outer half. Not quite sure what he was looking for right there by Reeves because he just got a 2 2 fastball and he just stared stared down the, the ball as it went right by him. Auburn has defeated Texas A&M 5 to 4. Missouri and Mississippi State are in the seventh inning in Starkville. It's a 6 6 game. You are up to date in the SEC. Mm. 94. Look how quick Fontenot's work and gets the ball right back on the mound. Davis Heller at the plate. Fontenot didn't miss by much to a big target. Heller well, is three for three. And now four for four. How about that? He was two for 20 on the season before tonight. Big fella from Phoenix, Arizona, went to high school in Gilbert, suburb of Phoenix, and then went to South Mountain. Community College last year gets a break, you know, instead of it being 0 2, it's 1 1. I mean, because that was a strike. I mean, Heller's six foot eight. It was a fastball, even almost below the belt. 
and it was called a ball high because the umpire is not used to adjusting the zone that much. But you got to you got to adjust it from person to person. Heller originally signed with Oklahoma out of high school, and then uh, just changed and went to JUCO uh, right there in Phoenix. He's four for four. Unbelievable. Doubled the number of hits he had. Jarvis has had a couple of hits. His hitting streak is seven games. And Jarvis, a fine play at shortstop right there to end the inning. He came charging the ball and showed his arm. Big play to minimize the damage for Alabama. When we review, reviewed Fontenot's season numbers, walks have been a bit excessive. Tying run at the plate here. Now it's 3 and 0. And this is where Fontenot, at times this year, has gotten into a great deal of difficulty. Let's see if he can find the rhythm. Well, he came from, he threw three straight strikes a couple of hitters ago. Let's see if he comes back with the fastball. Palmineri is re readjusting his defense. Jarvis singled his first two at bats, had a sacrifice bunt last time. There is strike one. So between Heller and Jarvis, the seven and eight hitters, Ronnie, they're six for six. <laughs> My goodness. Throw the nine in there, you get seven, you get seven hits out of seven, eight, and nine. Seven out of the twelve. Have come from the bottom third of the order. Fontno has moved the count to three and two. All right. Well, Heller will get the start, which is good. He doesn't run well over there at first, so he's going to get a big secondary lead. And of course, he will not be held by Trey Morgan. The big fella needs to get as much of a lead as he can. The three-two pitch. Lined into right center field, and this is down. It rolls all the way to the wall. Heller is going to score. Jarvis is on his way to third. There is no throw. A two out run scoring triple by Jim Jarvis, his third of the year. And Heller and Jarvis combined are now seven for seven. What a strange game it is, but what a great job. There's a fastball inside corner and it is pummeled into the gap. Heller was off and running. He scores easily. And now the tie and run is 90 feet away. And remember all of this started with two outs and nobody on base. 13. It was the 13th hit. Took 13 hits before Alabama finally scored a run. Rose is one for three. The tying run is 90 feet away. Ball one. By the way, we were saving this stat in case it happened, but the most hits allowed in a Major League Baseball shutout is 14. That happened twice in the history of the game that a team gave up 14 hits and still had a shutout. Foul That's ball. a foul ball and a tremendous play by Trey Morgan. Look at Ooh. Morgan. Called right away. I mean, way early. First base umpire Barry Chambers did not hesitate. He saw it as foul all the way. Rose has struck out. He had a fourth inning single and rolled to the right side last time. He's hit by a pitch. So the nine hole hitter is hit by a pitch and we go back to the top of the order. And Ronnie time after time after time. LSU relief pitching has brought the hearts up into the throats of LSU fans. Paul Maneri is going to go out and Talk to Fontenot. This will be a, a check on how they want to pitch to Peyton Willis. Nobody has been throwing in the bullpen, although it might get started now. 
Well, Patota came in to pinch hit. He gets hit by a pitch. And then now we're going to have a, a pinch runner for Will Patota. And it just seems like often this is the case. Devin Fontenot, he, he gives you your money's worth. <laughs> if you're an LSU baseball fan, you uh, it's entertaining one way or the other when he pitches. Even when he does well, it's entertaining. Well, Wilson comes to the plate. He has stranded six of the ten runners left on base. That's because everybody at the bottom of the order has been getting on base. Good guy to have up here. I'm sure Peyton Wilson glad to see Marceau out of the game and face somebody different. Give Alabama a lot of credit. They've shown a lot of fight here tonight. 13 hits. They trail two to one. LSU's only got five hits in this game. Pinckney is the pinch runner at first. Fontenot fires it down the middle for a strike. Andrew Pinckney represents the go-ahead run at first base. Peyton Wilson has stranded six runners on base personally tonight and has ended three innings at the plate. Has a chance at a fourth. He has grounded out three times and flied into a double play. Tension in the eighth. Time is called. There's a loose baseball out in front of the Alabama dugout. That's that ball got loose from the bullpen. Well played by Alabama right there. <laughs> hey, wait, wait till the big moment and then let that ball get loose. Everybody resets. Fontenot takes a deep breath. Cold strike three. He burned the inside corner. It backed away Wilson. It was over the plate. And Fontenot, after giving up a run with two outs, strikes out Wilson. Malasso's trying to set up outside. He comes back inside. That's why it kind of looked a little awkward. But it still was a strike on the inside corner. That's eight batters that Wilson left on base. Fontenot makes it hairy. But the Tigers go to the bottom of the eighth with the lead, two to one. Did you know the source of odor in your home could be all your soft surfaces? Odors get trapped in your home's fabrics and resurface over time. Febreze Fabric Refresher eliminates odors. Its water-based formula safely penetrates fabrics where odors hide. Spray it on your rugs, your curtains, your furniture, all over your home to make it part of your tidying up routine. Febreze Fabric Refresher, for an all-over freshness you'll love. The Harry's Razor is not the same. Because some of us are not the same. Our close shave comes from our five German engineered blades designed to start sharp and stay sharp. And we never upcharge you for high quality. So for those of us who don't want just the same, Harry's Razors are here. Harry's, not the same. Available in store and at harrys.com. Opinions are flying everywhere about postseason projections. D1Baseball.com has weighed in. You see the last five in and the first five out. According to D1Baseball.com, Alabama and LSU right now projected to be the first five out. But that certainly underscores the importance of this series between LSU and Alabama. Yeah, no doubt that if, you know, whoever gets the best of each other this weekend, you can move over to that left bracket. You know, LSU or Alabama at the end of this weekend probably going to be part of the last five in. 
because you know somebody over there in the last five minutes probably going to move to the right. Alabama has made some defensive changes as we see Chase Lee making his 17th appearance. He has replaced William Freeman. You know, Lee they, is 6-0 and oh this year with a tiny earn run average of 1.33. You see the numbers. They're spectacular. He's one of their best relievers. And that ERA is nothing. 39 punch outs in 27 innings. He's only walked eight. That's a fantastic almost 5-1. to one. Strikeout to walk ratio. 15 hits in 27 innings is sensational. Andrew Pinckney is now patrolling center field. There's the new center fielder, and Jackson Tate has moved to left field. Chase Lee, a six foot, 175, 175 pound junior, and he comes at you from a little different angle and a little different look. That sidearm approach. Very tough on these right-handed hitters, and that's what LSU's got three in a row here coming up. A strike from Lee to Gavin Dugas. Dugas has a sacrifice fly that came in the first inning. He has bounced out to shortstop. He has struck out. Doty and Thompson will follow. Mm. That one caught Dugas by a little surprise there. 91 heat right at the kneecaps. Dugas out of Homa, Louisiana. And you see that sidewinder almost. Submarine delivery. Three balls and a strike. Ball four, a five pitch pass. Walk number four from the Alabama pitching staff tonight. Check it, make it walk number five. Here's Kate Doty, who has singled twice and fly to left. Doty from nearby Denham Springs. Dugas at first with a short lead, and Doty is asked to body, withdraws the bat. And that's the first rule of bunting, bunt a strike. Good job. You know, sometimes you see people chase balls out of the strike zone just because they get the bunt signal. No, that you still want to make them funnel it. Runner on the move, a swing and a drive to deep center field, and it is tracked down near the warning track by the new center fielder. That's well done. Pinckney chasing it down out there. Coach Maneri. Loves the hit and run. That time showed the bunt, pulled it back. And then the second pitch, figured he was going to get a good pitch. You know, the Alabama's just going to kind of throw it in there, expecting the bunt. And he let Doty uh, do the hit and run. And Doty hammered one about 375, well. 380 feet. But Pinckney tracked it down, retreating and moving to his right. In the ninth for Alabama. It won't be easy. Hammeter. Denton, who's the leading hitter for the Crimson Tide. And Prater, who has power and two base hits in this game. A strike over the outside edge, and that's where that sidewinder can become really effective. Well, you know, the thing also that makes Lee special is even though he throws sidearm, it's fast. It's 90 miles an hour. I mean, a lot of times you see those sidearm submariner guys, they're more spinner, slider type pitcher, sinker, changeup, but he's got the heat.
you know, as a hitter, when you're facing somebody who throws from down under, Lynn, you're, you're looking for that pop-up ball. You're, you're, you're up there hoping to see something jump up in the zone. If it starts off low, you know it's going to be low. You, you've got to see it start off high because it's always going to go down. Thompson has flied to right, bounced into a 5-4-3 double play, and he struck out in the seventh. The Giacomo is on deck. Two balls, two strikes. To the young shortstop, Jordan Thompson. A check swing. And a foul ball out of play. I don't know if Thompson hit the ball or the ball hit Thompson. <laughs> he kind of stopped his swing and just flip, fl uh, flipped it over that first base dugout for a foul ball. There will be a play at first base. As Lee was able to keep that ball near his reach. Dugas moved up to second. He's in scoring position with two outs. <laughs> LSU has been involved in a two to one loss this year. That was the third game at Auburn. But the Tigers do not have a two to one win. De Giacomo with his first at bat after coming in defensively. He had a tough series at Auburn striking out eight times. He's been really streaky this year. He's had some stretches where he has carried LSU offensively. He's also had some stretches where he's had a great difficulty of putting the ball in play. You're right. The Giacomo can get down the line pretty quickly, but the play is made from the left side. So the drama goes to the top of the ninth. LSU 2, Alabama 1. Phone it into 1-800-FARMERS to get policy perks like a home and auto bundle discount. I'm phoning it in, just save 20%. Get your policy perks by calling 1-800-FARMERS. Go ahead, phone it in. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Did you know that every single flush flings odors onto your soft surfaces? Then they get released back into the air, so you smell them later. Ew, right? Mm. That's why Febreze created small spaces. Press firmly and watch it get to work. Unlike the leading cone, small spaces continuously eliminates odors in the air and on surfaces, so they don't come back for 45 days. Just imagine what it can do with other odors. The Harry's razor is not the same. Because some of us are not the same. Our close shave comes from our five German engineered blades designed to start sharp and stay sharp. And we never upcharge you for high quality. So for those of us who don't want just the same, Harry's razors are here. Harry's not the same. Available in store and at harrys.com. Two to one, LSU leading with a run in the first, a run in the seventh. The Tigers yielded a run in the eighth, and let's look at the Alabama offensive summary tonight. One run, 13 base hits. Eight Crimson Tide players have struck out. Alabama has left 12, and with runners in scoring position, one for 11. 
Devin Fontenot with a one run lead in the ninth. Nobody will catch up with this one. Hammeter at the plate. He's had a good day. He's been hit by a pitch. He has struck out his last two at bats. He has singled. This is the first time that he has faced Fontenot. Fontenot came on and threw a double play ball in the seventh. He got the first two batters out in the eighth before Alabama rallied and pushed across a run. Fontenot had to get the third out with runners at first and third. That pitch misses somewhere. A little bit down. Hammoner with three home runs this year, Lynn. Alabama's best hitter, Zane Denton, is on deck. This is two, three, and four in the Bama lineup. That was a, a, a swing he'd like to have back right there. Hammoner acted like he had a hit and run on it, and it was a 1 1 count. And he chased one up in the eyes. Can't do that if you're Alabama here in the ninth. You got a, as a leadoff batter. You want to make Fontenot throw strikes. These teams will play tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And also on Sunday at 2 o'clock. A liner right to the midsection of Morgan. A well hit ball, but it's out number one. So hanging slider, and Morgan doesn't even move. He drops to his knees like a catcher. Catching a bullpen didn't even take a step. And by the way, I think we're at the point, Lynn, where we can throw the ball around the horn. I mean, nobody's wearing masks. We're, you know, let's let's throw the ball around the horn. Let's get back to it's the last last piece of the puzzle to get back to real baseball. That's out in the bleachers on the left side. Zane Denton has grounded out twice. To Bianco, he has singled and struck out. Does he have home run power? Yes, he does. With eight. A slider gets a piece of the inside edge. It might have been his best pitch of the night with the breaking ball. This is a freeze ball slider catches the top part of the knees breaking the plate. Fontenot working ahead 0 2. What a ball game this has been. It has been strange with great extremes. Most of all it's a fingernail biter. The Giacomo is chasing, 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 and he gets it. He ran four furlongs to get it, but he did it. Now that's the luxury of having Giovanni De Giacomo in center field. They made the change, brought him in, moved Cruz to right, took Sanford out, and I don't know if anybody else on LSU's team runs that ball down out of the center field spot. And Dugas had a weird route here. I don't know if he he might have caught that ball, but he didn't look comfortable. He, he was didn't see it great, and the Giacomo had it all the way. The bearded one takes a, an extra base hit away from Zane Denton. This is Prater. Strike one. Two outs. Ninth inning. Two to one. LSU. First game in this series, Alabama and the Tigers. One ball, one strike. Prater has walked, he has doubled, he has singled, and he has bounced into a double play. He too has home run power. He's got a dozen of them. Fontenot overthrew that one. Prater last hit his 12th home run back against Missouri on April the 30th. That's been a while. So he's due. His 12 home runs leads Alabama. This is a big pitch. 
And now it's three to one. The count moves to Prater's favor. Owen Diodotti is scheduled to hit next. He's 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. Yeah, but all, most of that came against Marceau. All of it did. And uh, so Diodotti looking forward to seeing a different look if he gets an at bat. Brader tried to tie it with one swing. He might have helped out Fontenot. That ball looked to be a little bit up, but Fontenot reached back and left it all, let it all out. That was 95, as fastest pitch of the night. The crowd is on its feet. The 3 2 pitch, two outs in the ninth. Fontenot has overthrown two of them in this series, just really opening up and missing badly. Yeah, that time he tried to throw it 105 and pulled it badly. The tying run is at first base. You know, as a pitcher, sometimes when you're in that situation, Lynn, you got to tell you, you got to be able to step outside of your body and just make the pitch because the worst case scenario is you give up a solo homer, it's still a tie ball game. Now after the walk, you give up a solo home, you give up a home run, you're, you're losing. You're trailing. So that's. And Diodotti, even though he's having a rough night, does have 11 home runs this year. Diodotti flied to center field against Fontenot in the eighth. Diodotti hit a homer last weekend against Vanderbilt. This game has been like two tectonic plates <laughs> rubbing against each other. The pressure has been tremendous. The 0 1. Fontenot working ahead now. Two strikes on Diodotti. Diodotti does not have a base hit tonight. He had base hits in his last three games. I would stay away. I would not take a chance of Fontenot hitting Diodotti with a breaking ball. Diodotti got a little piece of that to remain extant at the plate. That time went with the breaker, but kind of set up more down the middle or outer portion. Fontenot sometimes when he misses, he pulls it towards his left side. The last thing you want here is a hit by pitch. So bounce it, stay away. Malazzo will have your back if you find them. The second 0-2 pitch on its way. Swing and a miss. This game is over. The LSU Tigers in a thriller are out hit 13 to 5 but hang on for a 2 to 1 victory and Ronnie we saw nearly everything in this game. Yeah, this was a, a great atmosphere as you see the crowd, a big crowd. This felt like the Alex Box of old. It was an exciting game. Alabama threw its best punch at LSU. This was a, one of the craziest games you and I have ever done. There were so many things that happened that, that go against the grain. Seven, eight, nine hole hitters had career days. Alabama out hit LSU 13 to five, but somehow the Tigers are high five and with the victory. And Landon Marceau gave up the most base hits he's ever given up in a game. 11 during his six and a third gritty innings. Devin Fontenot was reached for a run with two outs in the eighth. That tightened it to a one run game. But LSU with Fontenot on the mound in the ninth gets it done in game one. Going into the season, what did you think you do about LSU baseball? You thought they were going to pitch. Marceau did that, and you thought Fontenot was going to be an All-American type pitcher, and he was like that again tonight. Don't forget the SEC Network will have the game tomorrow. It starts at 2 o'clock. We'll be back on